if if you're trying to learn how to code, um, one thing I kind of suggest to people is just learn how to focus on building out one full stack application. Okay. So the reason I kind of suggest this, suggest this, and I just I kind of gave this advice on my Discord channel, is that there's a ton of sub problems that you're going to run into trying to implement a full stack application. Um, so for an example, like let's say you wanted to set your goal of implementing a to-do list application, right? That's like the typical example most people do. Uh, the reason I say focus on building out a full like MERN stack or, you know, it doesn't really matter. Just pick whatever technology you want type of application is because you get to learn a lot of different things. Like for example, the front end, if you just start stick with like vanilla JS, you learn a lot about the technologies and the implementations of how you can actually like change DOM elements, how you can manipulate them, how you can style them on the front end, how you can lay out your HTML. And then on the back end, you also learn a little bit about like what is a you know REST API? How do you connect to it? How do you return data from it? What are headers? What are HTTP methods? What's a database? And understanding the full stack is really important. Even if you just wanna become a front end developer, there's a lot of stuff that if you know some information about the back end, it's going to make you a better front end developer, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I'm not really sharing my screen with anything important, but sometimes like I scroll through these things and, you know, people say that you should have like a, a resume or a coding project website where you kind of sh show all your projects. And they say you should have like four to 10 projects. I don't really, A, agree with a, a portfolio website. I don't even have one, but then again, I have a lot of experience. So I'm not trying to like fight hundreds of other developers trying to get an entry level job. But four to five projects, that seems kind of excessive. Like honestly, if you just have one big project, one big full stack application where you have a UI that's connecting to a backend, you're doing a bunch of CRUD methods, and even something more complicated, like you have authentication or authorization set up, you can log in with different user roles. Like the more you just build onto one project, I think the more you're gonna learn and the better it looks for a potential uh, resume and the more you can actually talk about in our interview. If you just have like a bunch of small little, you know, tic-tac-toe projects or connect four projects on a portfolio site, like those don't show too much because you can kind of build those by following any tutorial and just like uploading the code and saying that you did it. It doesn't necessarily mean you know how you did it, but you know, it just shows that you built something. But I think picking a project that you're kind of passionate about like for example, if you like BMX biking, then build a website that you can easily go and search through different types of BMX tricks and maybe have the ability for users to upload a video that shows you how to do that trick. Or maybe like a, a walkthrough of how to do the trick or tips and tricks for doing the tricks. You know what I'm saying? Like find something you're interested in, find a hobby you like doing, make a website or an application that kind of fulfills that hobby, solves a particular problem space uh, with that hobby. And then in doing so, I mean, you'll learn a lot, but you also stay a little bit more motivated because you're actually building something that's interesting, right? Just building a to-do list application is not too interesting, but building a, you know, a workout tracker where you can actually every day use and actually track how much weight you're lifting. And if you're progressing, show charts or something like that, it just gives you more motivation. Um, so kind of that, that advice of building a full stack application, it can be a little daunting, especially as a beginner, because there's a lot of stuff that you have to learn. But if you just keep it simple and just like focus on taking a bigger problem like a to-do list app and breaking it down into smaller problems, it makes it a lot easier to kind of tackle. So for an example, if you need to build a to-do list application, what is the first thing you're gonna to need to do? You're gonna need some type of front end that is going to be able to show a list of to-do list items, right? So you need to kind of figure out how do I show a list of items like how do i repeat dom elements over and over again and show the text and then if you google that or if you kind of think about it we have arrays in javascript and we have the ability to kind of loop over the array and then for every element of that array you can actually create dom elements and put them on the page so if you're just using vanilla javascript you can just kind of do that approach and get some to-do list items to show up on the page and then as you continue to like try to add new features, like let's say you decide that you want to be able to add a delete button to your to-do list items. Well, you got to figure out, okay, if I add a delete button, how do I allow it to actually do something when someone clicks on the button, right? So you have to go and look up, how do you listen for click events in JavaScript? 
And that might show you some, you know, blog posts that say use add click listener or add event listener, or you can use the on click DOM attribute to kind of listen for a click and then call a callback function. And then you got to go and Google like, okay, what is a callback function? Because most tutorials are going to kind of show you callback functions and how you use them and what they're used for. Um, and then once you understand a callback function, you can actually have that click of the delete button call a function. And now you got to figure out, okay, when this delete function calls, I need it to go through my DOM elements and delete the one I just clicked, right? So there's a ton of different ways you can uh, achieve this little sub problem. You could just clear out all the to-do items and re-render them after you delete the item from the array. Um, so you have to figure out, okay, how do I delete an item from an array? And well, you go Google that and JavaScript is going to tell you that you need to use a splice method or you need to just redeclare the array and filter out the item you don't want. So yeah, that, that might lead you down the path of JavaScript array methods, either filter or um, the other one I just talked about, splice. And then you kind of just keep going down this approach of like, you have a small problem you need to solve. You go and you figure out how to solve it and then you move on to the next problem. Again, like in this to delete fallback function we talked about, how do you have it talk to a backend API? So you go and you look up, how do you send a request to a backend from a, a function? And then that might show you blog posts about using Axios or using some type of, you know, built-in library like fetch, where you can take data and send it to an API endpoint. And then you have to go and look up, okay, well, what, what is an API endpoint? Like, what does that actually mean? And then like, you'll go down the path of learning about HTTP methods, it put, delete, patch, post, whatever. And then you understand that you can send these different types of requests to an API and the API is going to do different things based on what you send. Um, <clears throat> So then after all that, like you have to go and actually look up, okay, how do I actually build out an API? So that might lead you down the path of reading about Express.js, you know, how to set up an API server, how to create the actual app, how to register routes on the app, and how to have like, let's say you hit like a slash to-do list um, URL. How do you have that URL like run some code? So then you're going to find out that you need to use another callback. It's passing like a rec and a res object to you. And you can use that rec object to get data that was sent from the front end. And you can use a res object to send data back to the front end. So all these, these things that you're solving, like the, the dots kind of have to connect together so you can understand like what exactly you're doing. But if you just slowly break down a bigger problem into smaller sub problems, you're going to be able to actually fully build out that full stack application. And I also recommend don't like watch too many tutorial videos because they're basically going to walk you through this approach, right? They're going to show you how they, or they pretty much plan out beforehand, like what they're going to build. And they kind of know the steps already, right? If you do this by yourself without you are without watching a tutorial video, without watching a, um, any type of helpful video, you have to kind of figure out these steps by yourself and you have to like plan and break down these problems yourself, which is kind of the main point of learning the code. Learning the code is all about programming and problem solving. And if someone else is doing the problem solving for you, if you're watching a tutorial and they're problem solving for you and you're just typing what they're telling you to type, you're really not learning anything. You're not breaking down the problem into your own like smaller, understandable piece of information that helps you connect the dots personally. I would recommend just focus on one project, build out a full stack application, make sure it has a bunch of features, uh, you know, you could spend a month or two or three months on this project, just keep on adding new features to it. And every step of the way, like, th just ask yourself questions, break down the problem into smaller problems, and it's going to be able to be a lot more manageable. And you're gonna be able to figure this stuff out a lot better if you do that. Um, yeah, if you like this talk, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.